Hello? Hey, how are you? Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm good. So what do you go by? Um, Phyllis today, but my, um, but people know me as Fifi in, you know, growing up, my family and friends, they call me Fifi. What's your nationality? Um, I'm Mexican. Uh, I was born in, um, up here in California, in the north, northern California. Were you ever part of any gangs, groups, organizations, or an associate? Um, as far as gangs, um, when I was a young, when I was young, about the sixth grade, we had a gang called uh, the United Browns over in um, Old Broderick, and um, that was the first time I was ever in introduced to the gangs. Um, uh, we had a big homie, Gato Gamino. He was um, he was like the main one there that. And at that time, I was fascinated by uh, the United Browns, you know, because it was our neighborhood. And, you know, Gato Camino, a lot of people kn knew him, and he had this very distinctive voice, Gato. Uh, he used to call me Fifi Loca. So that, that's about as far as the gangs that, um, you know, that I was familiar with. And then, um, you know, as far as being a brother girl, uh, that was uh, more more of a name than a gang, but um, there was no crazy like initiations or nothing like that. You know, it was just based on being from Broderick and you know having pride for our neighborhood and stuff like that. And once I started getting into the you know the um, the things that people do, you know that we did, you know like selling drugs or being down for the hood or whatever, um, I was labeled as you know, soft label basically as a proud brother girl, you know, and that's where um, I used to drive around with those light, those crazy license plates, you know, the BRK girl. Um, and then, let me see, uh, as far as uh, organizations, um, my husband was a NF member. He was a C. That's all I knew, you know. He, uh, that, was, that was his life. He always liked protecting me and his daughter from that part of life. And the only thing he ever schooled me on was to never get involved with those politics or never get involved with, like, the gossip of, you know, the neighborhood uh, gossip about people having paperwork and, you know, and stuff like that. He uh, basically schooled me on how, how not to get caught up. And um, if uh, his parole officer ever came, there's was the difference between who would ever knock on our door would be his parole officer or the feds. And he basically warned me about, you know, the feds if they ever came to the door. So he basically protected me and my daughter from from that life, you know. So, um, yeah, but my my husband, he's no longer with us. He, he passed two, two years ago. Um, as far as I know, he was still... He was still active. That's what, where his demons came in, you know. So, that's as far as the gangs go. And the in in prison, uh, we really didn't have no no gangs in there. It was if you drove up, you were basically labeled by where you were from by your area code. So, whether you were black, brown, white, or other, whatever. I was from 916. So when I pulled up as being from 916. Um, that's where basically your love came in. So, you know, we would take care of the girls, you know, have them out till they were able to shop. So, yeah. And what were you incarcerated for? Uh, my incarcerations consist of, uh, uh, first it started off with uh, a basic uh, DUI. That's, uh, I've and then after that, they say once you get you get a you know a speeding ticket, everything else follows over the years, and which was true. Um, I have like uh, possessions, uh, evading corporal injury to spouses, um, and all the small things that come along with you know hustling. And um, yeah, and I, I did. Um, my 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 time that I've done in the penitentiary was I did uh, three terms 
and two violations. Um, I don't know if they do violations these days, but uh, yeah, I did three terms. I did uh, two years, eight months was my first one, and two 16-month terms along with five-month violation and, and, and an eight-month violation in Stockton. Okay, which women's prisons um, exactly were you incarcerated at? And can you elaborate a little bit on the drama that goes on um, oh. in the women's prison? Oh yeah, the women's prison. Um, I was my my first time. I was endorsed. Uh, I went to VSP first, and then they endorsed me to Chowchilla. That was my that was my first time um, where I did my two years, eight months in Chowchilla. It was different from VSP back in the day. Chalchilla was more like hardcore because you had all these Sureñas and and, uh, and and they they really played the game. They would roll up with tattoos blasted all over their faces, you know, and some of the girls were dead on guys. And um, so, but at the VSPW, my second term, uh, basically it's like the same same prison built the same way, but it was a little newer, so. And then the VSP, uh, there wasn't that much drama like over in Chowchilla. Chowchilla was like, you know, big time. You know, all, all the lifers had it, had it uh, down. They would, they'd control the dope, you know, the dope game over there. And um, so I seen a lot of drama. I seen girls pull up with 16 month terms and end up back then catching cases. I mean, end up doing life, you know, based on what they did in those little 16 months, you know. So, yeah, it was a crazy little world in Chowchilla. VSP wasn't so bad. You know, VSP, they had those, uh, back in the day, it was called Prop 36. And um, so people, they had that drug program. In 99, I opened up the first, the first uh, drug program in Chowchilla back then. Um, so that's basically where where I did get my start was being forced into those programs, but um, those programs never really uh, did anything because I used to see females coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. But I guess once you um, you know you, your your heart is tired and you're in, in everything that you're doing, you take advantage of those programs, and some make it, some don't. You know, like I said, it's it was just behavior modification that. Uh, didn't last very long, um, and once I took advantage of those programs over there, VSPW, you know, I did good for about uh, about three years. You know, I did all the above, and you know, been um, poly of the year with uh, something called the VIP program, Valley uh, Volunteers and Polo, where you get mentors. All that stuff was good, you know, but I was always there was always something missing. I wasn't really free. I still felt like you know I had to either follow their plan or you know I was deemed just another number just another person you know a female from the penitentiary but um yeah it wasn't like I said it wasn't until my last trip in, in the county jail is where I finally surrendered my heart and after that it's a wrap it's all good okay you, you have anything to say to the youngsters out here the youth that's um you know, involved in gang activity or, or thinking about joining gangs? Oh, yeah. First and foremost, uh, the times are changing. Um, I heard there's a new a new law that I hit about the gangs, you know. It could be something small, but once you're affiliated, that could, that's going to get tacked on to, to your controlling case, and, and that's not good because... You know, any any small thing you do, if you're getting affiliated, um, it's going to come on you hard. You know, and being being involved in the gang, if you know anybody, all these gangsters I hear talk about their stories and stuff. They all have this one thing in common: is that they're tired and it's dead end, and it doesn't. Um, you don't really get nothing at the end of the day, but except so-called respect. You know, and. Um, I know that for a fact, you know, because my husband, when he passed, you know, he 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 was he was a C, whatever that is, you know, and um, towards the end of his life, I, I I seen him, you know, he uh, he he was he was nothing, you know, 
it was nothing to him. Basically, I guess he just uh, he just continued um, doing what he had to do, I guess. But um, it, it, it was never a payday for him, you know. It was never a recognition. I know his family never got nothing. I didn't even get a phone call after he passed, you know. So um, if the youth are going to think about getting clicked up and doing this and that, it's just, it, I mean, it's all fun and games in the end until you're, you start taking your freedom. And the only ones you heard, if you have kids, man, your poor kids, you know. It's like one day you wake up, they're having kids. Time goes by so fast, so, you know, to think about, you know, doing time. Things are changing, and, and it's not good. Yeah, so. Yeah. So let me ask you this. What you got going on nowadays, and you got any uh, future plans? Uh, what I got going on nowadays is, um, well, Again, I, I uh, surrendered my heart to the Lord back in 2011. And um, when I was in the penitentiary, uh, that's where I used to, you know, seek God and pray to Him and ask Him to to help me in my situations and this and, you know, this and that. But I never fully surrendered my, my life to Him. But um, nowadays, I, I just... Uh, I'm living my best life in him right now, you know, and it's only because of Jesus, you know. Um, you know, he's restored basically everything. And I, I remember when I went to prison, um, I was in this one basic cell there for my very first time, my very last time there. I was in the same cell, so then I knew, you know, I, I, something had to change. But I, I couldn't change myself, you know. I tried that. I did all those, you know, they used to force you in those programs back in the day with that Prop 36. But at the end, my very last trip, um, you know, I took advantage of those programs. And, um, um, but all, the, all that was was just behavior modification. That lasted, you know, it lasted a while, but, it, but there was always something missing, you know. And what was missing was... Uh, was Christ and what and what He did for me, you know. Um, and so right now I'm just I'm just living what what He said, you know. He said, um, "Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens," and those, that's exactly what my life consists of, you know. Because, um, you know, I came out, I had my, you know, basically my daughter on my hip, and I, I didn't want to do that kind of stuff no more. But I, I was only doing what I knew, you know. But it wasn't until I went back to the county, and um, I said, "All right, God, you know, this is me. I don't want to. I didn't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want, you know, because people label you. You you pull up. You're doing the Christ thing and this and that or whatever. But I have already knew, you know, I uh, had a healthy fear of God. So um, when I went my last trip, I just, you know, I said, "All right, God, here I am, you know. And next thing you know, it, it's a wrap. My first day back." going back to church, had a big old black eye, and God has been with me ever since, you know? So, but yeah, my, today my day is um, living for Christ. You know, it's not, a, it's not a religious thing, it's a beautiful thing, you know? Every day is a beautiful struggle at the end of the day. Um, and uh, what, what's best about it is that my heart is now a heart of flesh, and it's not this big old rocky stone, you know? It's a good thing. Okay, I don't have any more questions for you, but do you have anything else, um, any final words before we close this interview? Yeah. Um, I would like to, uh, you know, encourage, you know, I don't, you know, I know your audience by throwing the, you know, going through those uh, people commenting and stuff, but... Um, I would like to, you know, the females who, who, who tune in, you know, I want to remind them that um, uh, back when we were locked up, you know, everybody used to uh, go to church or, you know, and, 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 you know, they had somewhat of that peace back there. But once they hit the, they hit the gate, you know, they, they forgot about all that. But I want them to know that all those times that you did go, uh, I've seen those, seen those times, and today is uh, 
the same Jesus we met back there, he's still out here today, you know. And uh, I just want to encourage you to, you know, you seek everything else, give God a chance, you know. Um, because he restores everything that the CDC system takes, because we're no longer the same people once, you know, females go in, they come out, they're no longer that that lady no more, you know. I, they feel like they're not. But um, I just want to say that if you trust in God, you know, the same prayers you heard that, said back then, he hears them out here. And I'm not saying all our stories are going to be the same, but God does restore you know, when I was back there, yeah, I lost everything. You know, the respect of my children. Now I'm a grandma, and man, I'm a, I'm an awesome grandma. And uh, one more story I wanted to share. If you don't think uh, God can restore, back then I used to have this really good job at UC Davis. Uh, I don't know if I was supposed to say that, but anyways, anyways, if you're from uh, Sacramento, you know UC Davis is is a pretty good job. But I was fired from that job back then, just like 29 years ago. Basically fired for, that's where I started my, my uh, you know, my bad life. Um, anyways, long story short, I ended up applying uh, for that job again. And I was surprised that they said, okay, you got the job. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I got the job. But I know I ain't going to pass no background, you know, along with five trips to the penitentiary in my, in my, in my the cases that I had. And um, so I did the background check, and it came back clean. And they said, all right, you're hired. And I was like, what? Anyways, that's just a, you know, a happy story that only because of God, you know. And so anyways, I just wanted to encourage the ladies to, um, if you pray back there, God heard every prayer, and he bottled every tear, and it's not too late. He pursues you. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, former Broadway girl, Phyllis. We appreciate you taking your time and your busy schedule and conducting this interview um, with us, and you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you for having me, and thank you for reaching out. And um, I pray that your, your, your audience grows and you make a difference, and that's good stuff you're doing. All right? Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.